so uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Murray McCallum, uh, Edinburgh and Scotland internationalist. Murray, how you doing? Hi, uh, Murray, thanks. How are you getting on, Craig? Nice to see you. Uh, how are you too, Paul? I'm doing all right. Yeah, not too bad. Um, so you started your career at Dunfermline and then you've um, you've gone to Strathallan School. Could you just quickly give us a very short insight how that move to Strathallan came about? Um, well, I started Dunfermline pretty young, rattled, uh, rattled away at rugby, absolutely loved it. Big kid, playing in the mud, um, got stuck in. Uh, and if I'm honest, I just, I just kept enjoying it, I kept enjoying it at a young age. I had a really good group of mates at the rugby club and it was actually properly came about at our Fife under 15s kind of player identification day up yeah. at the Perth Sports Centre. And Andy Henderson, yeah. uh, who's who's the DOR at Strath, I think he's the DOR. Uh, he was anyway, or he's... And he was, I think he, was, he still he was, is, yeah. I was there, yeah. Um, and he is an ex-copper, uh, bumped into my dad, who is an ex-copper, got chatting, Hendo seemed to like what he saw, saw a bit of potential, um, and went along to a bursary day, uh, scholarship day uh, at Strath, uh, just just went for the sports scholarship, I probably could have helped my parents out and tried to get an academic scholarship, but I couldn't be bothered sitting the test, but um, and I was lucky enough to be offered a sports scholarship as well as a, as well as a bursary to kind of um, make make it a bit more affordable, and uh, and and that's how kind of Strath took off. Brilliant, and obviously you spent a wee bit of time in Aberdeen just for a few months with uni and that. So you've absolutely you up north as well with grammar and everything, um, and then you managed to get your your contract, obviously to come back down with Edinburgh. Could you just um, quickly tell us that uh, that moment where you were playing for Harriet and um, uh, the Harlequins <laughs> game? I yeah, I pulled off the pitch. That was uh, that was. I was still technically in the academy then, but I'd made my debut for Edinburgh a few weeks before. Uh, came off the bench against um, Treviso, and then Timisoara, and then boys were back fit. WP was back fit for the Harlequins game, and I was like, right, sound completely understandable. Uh, the big man's back. Played for the nails. Uh, Ten minutes on the pitch, I'd scored a try. Uh, I was still quite new to tight head at this point uh, in terms of adult rugby. Yeah, yeah. I'd scored a try, I'd, I'd got a scrum penalty, and then I'd, I just got bummed in a scrum. Like I, I, They gave him my tatties, I'm not going to lie. And um, and Stevie Laurie's at the side of the pitch, and I'm standing waiting for I'm like, oh, God, goodness sake, I'm about to kick a goal, get three points, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Stevie, Stevie's up like that, and he's like, Maza, Maza, come here. He's like, you're coming off, Struan Sessler Se uh, comes on. I'm like, you're joking. Like, you're absolutely joking. Like, one bad scrum, I'm like, Monte, I'm 19. Uh, and then my mate Fish, who wasn't playing that game, was stood at the side and he was like, nah, mate, your dad's inside. He's got the car at the front. You need to head to Murrayfield now. Uh, that was when R uh, Rory Sutherland had his um, pretty shocking double groin rupture in the warm-up. It was brutal on him. Um, and Jack Cosgrove was, uh, was ill, I think, at the time. So he wasn't, they didn't have a 24th man and I was the only one available. So Duncan Hodge had phoned Phil Smith and said, look, we need him now. Yeah. Uh, so I played, played the first 10 minutes, got west across the Murrayfield, made it made it there for about 25, 30 minutes into the Edinburgh game and then came on for the last kind of seven or eight minutes. So uh, two games in a row, two wins and about 17 minutes of actual code. So it was a, it was a good day and an even better night. <laughs> I know, you won the game right as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You must have been yeah, that was a cracking game. Uh, a lot of youngsters in that squad and to turn yeah, over yeah. Harlequins was class. No, oh, that's quite the day. Ten minutes with Harriet's get a give a penalty away, then you'll beat Harlequins a few hours later. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take that, that mate. <laughs> yeah, take that. Um, just also, you, you know, Richard Cockrell, he, you know, he came in three or four, well, I don't know, three or four seasons ago. Um, what he, He's done a lot of talks and presentations on team culture. Um could you just quickly give us an insight on what those kind of first six months looked like when he came in or, or you know, when you had that interaction, what set the ground running within my rugby? Uh, Cocker's team culture, uh, from what him and the coaches drive, is all about discipline. And that's, that's, that's what we needed when they first came in. We were, uh, we'd gone through a bit of a transition period uh -huh. in terms of coaches. Alan Solomon's left us early the season before. Um, Duncan Duncan Hodge wasn't um, wasn't a head coach, but he came in and he, he took over the role. 
uh, for the year. And I think we just needed a bit of kind of direction, um, a bit of kind of perspective of how how we'd had it, and um, and kind of needs to hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. And and boys bought in, boys really bought in, and uh, and worked hard. And now it's a um, couple of years on. The boys have really, I think, the boys have taken the team culture role on themselves, and we were a really tight, tight knit group of players um, mm. who, who who are all really good mates and and, and really enjoy each other's company, and and, okay. and we drive the standards mm. ourselves, which is pretty good. No, oh, definitely, no, that's great. So obviously, to get to the level that you're playing at, um, well, you know, obviously getting straight to you know getting your international cap and that. Obviously, as we know, a lot of hard work is needed. In there, but what sort of methods of training have you found have really enhanced your game? So, for example, like video analysis or your one-to-one skill sessions, or um, or uh, strength and conditioning. What like kind of area do you think has been the most kind of helpful, to, uh, you know to improve to your game? With, to start with, it's uh, for me. It was realizing strengths and weaknesses, and my weakness was my body composition and body weight and cardio fitness because uh, I was pretty pretty confident. I was pretty sound with my uh, with a lot of my set piece. For a young prop, I still had a lot, still have a lot to learn. But I was I was getting there with my set piece and my soft skills were um, were pretty good. But my uh, I needed to kind of lose a bit of the puppy fat and um, and and kind of and and condition myself to the game. Yeah. And, uh, and and having the brutal conversations that were had when Cockers and Nick Lum were there and seeing that came in mm. came as a bit of a shock to me and a lot of the guys. But having a sit and having a, having a look back, it's like no, that was the right thing to do because that's that's exactly what that's exactly what me and a few others needed. Um, mm. But things like that about taking your game to the next level, I would say it's about realizing in yourself what you think you need, what what you need to work on mm. and what is what, what's holding you back. Uh, pick one of those and hammer it. Um, whilst obviously you, you don't want to lose you, the skills you've already got, so you do need to keep working on those. Sure. Uh, and then, and once you kind of get yourself into a condition that you that you are confident on the rugby pitch in, yeah. Uh, then that's when, um, for your game playing things, you do need to start looking at a, a bit of one to one. Ask the coaches. Say I'm a prop. I'll be asking cockers. What do you want from me in terms of if I'm at tight head? How 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 are you wanting me to scrummage? What do you want me to work on? Uh, or if I'm at loose head again, the same sorts of things. Or if it's my ball carrier, um, contact work, and and then see what they say. And like you say, video analysis. You're absolutely right. Um, having those tools now is is vital. Um, just to it gives you another perspective, different angles, because obviously you're there in the moment and you think you're doing the right thing, but then you have a look from your man's camera who's up in the stand and you, you do maybe need to think about the, the spaces that are around. Maybe use oh, the right. bit of footwork out and pass the ball to your mate or you, you, you maybe wear a bit tight in that defensive line and things like that. So, yeah, yeah no, you're absolutely right. All these tools now are, are, are fantastic and using the coaches to your advantage. Uh, I mean, they're there to coach you, absolutely, and coach the team and lead the team, but they're also there to develop you as a a player um, to, to go up to whoever you want in, in, in your coaching staff or um if it's in, if if you're a younger if you're a younger player and uh and maybe your younger team doesn't have like an S and C or things like that. We, mm. I realise that that's quite high performance. Yeah. Speak to you, speak to your mate. Ask him what do you think I should do? Um, have an ominous conversation or if you're or if you get into the gym, pick out a trainer and um and, and see what uh, and see what they can help you with. Um, because it is always good to have another person's perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. And and just when, how do you think rugby has changed um, as a sport, or or if we want to be really like kind of narrow, particularly within Scotland, from you know when you were playing eighteens, twenties, and even when you were you know with Edinburgh, and, you know four seat, you know four or five years ago compared to now, what's the biggest thing you've noticed in the change of the game? I think there's almost just a lot more of a spotlight on everything because every player's fit and every player's strong. Um, so you can't you can't really pick on the kind of weak guys. You you do need to. There's a lot more emphasis on your on on your on your soft skills and your um and kind of finding those spaces and your running lines and to, to in terms of the game, uh, there's a lot more of there is a lot more tactics. I'd say. 
Uh, you obviously you see a lot of people getting bored with these caterpillar rucks for exits, and you see mm. fans complaining of kicking. But a lot of the time, you need to do it because I tell you what, see playing rugby in your half and you're not going anywhere. That is stressful, and it saps so much energy. Especially um, as a front room, hundred percent, mate. See when you get caught in kick tennis and you're just watching that ball go back and forth, and you're like, "Somebody, please start doing something." <laughs> but, um, but no, like the, the caterpillar rocks. Obviously, everyone kind of wants those to um, kind of shorten a bit, and, and some of them are ridiculous. They're right, they are right, but mm. it's it's it's, it's, it's realising that you do need to put a lot. Of, it's all about transferring pressure, mm. and then capitalising on okay. that pressure with transfer because then the other team will just chuck it back on you and it's a constant cycle. Um, so getting the kicks in the right places and the, and the kick chase and then the tackle and <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 there is there's a lot to it. Totally. Uh, and ju- just lastly, with obviously with coronavirus it's happened, you know, everyone was in lockdown and you, obviously you guys, you weren't in, you weren't in camp and you weren't around each other a lot of the time so everything was kind of resumed whether that was your uh, fitness sessions to start with or, or whatever how how good was it when you managed to get back you know from a socialization point of view for for your mental health and just your overall kind of well-being when you managed to get back playing and socializing with your pals once again oh, honestly I can't describe it I'm, I'm a man who likes his routine I like being around people uh, I thrive off um, kind of social interaction and things. So lockdown was pretty tough in that sense. For, in that mm-hmm. sense for me, so as soon as I got back, we only got back into voluntary training in groups of between four and eight at the start. But see, just seeing the boys and getting in the gym, even if it's separated by a big kind of steel girder, a big kind of iron plate or whatever right. it was, and then you got out onto the pitch and you had to be fifteen meters apart doing your running. It was it was still great to go and kind of interact with the boys and the coaches. Totally. Um, because it is massive and particularly for boys who are involved in team sport um, we, we thrive off the team environment and and having that and, and like have a conversation with my, my missus a lot of the time uh, we are very lucky in a sense that a lot of our mates are our colleagues like we don't see the team as colleagues so it's it's, it's cutting about with your mates every day and doing that kind of passion that you love mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong it's tough but it's 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 very we're very fortunate in that sense and and having that to come back in uh, even though we had to we still have to distance and things like that um sure. we're tested twice well, you can't really distance on a tuesday afternoon session mind you but we've been tested by then so it's all right no, nice. um, but it is, it is it was fantastic by by late summer uh, mid summer i'd say when we got back into the full team training yeah. um it was it, it felt as normal as it could be and, yeah. it's, and it has continued, obviously, restaurants and outdoors and oh, like, like the, the outside world and that has still not really changed. But we've no. been lucky enough to have our own little bubble of, uh, of, of, norm, or no, of normality um, for uh, within our working day, Absolutely. which has been very nice. Absolutely. No, I think it's, it's so important that, um, especially for you know, young, young people that are be uh, getting back to rugby, they just focus less on the tactics and... And the gameplay, and they just get back with social, socialising with their pals once again. Um, Absolutely, uh, get around the boys, girls, whoever, um, yeah. every, every team, get around everyone, yeah. and, and and just enjoy being back with each other. And then that'll then that'll transfer into the game because a happy team plays well, from what I'm aware of. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, listen, thanks for uh, jumping on and speaking to us, uh, and good luck with uh, the rest of the season. And we'll hopefully catch up soon. Yeah, no worries at all, mate. Thanks for having us on. All the best with Apex. Cheers. Thanks, Sam.